We got him. Huh? What? Well, now there's 10. There was 11, but now there's 10. And here's the sad news where we come into this. Uh, hey, good morning, my friends. Welcome to this video. If you are new here, my name is Nick and I am the caretaker slash owner of this homestead, Pitch Kettle Acres. If you're returning, welcome back. It's great to have you. Today we've got some chores and something to talk about. Good news, sad news. Today's rather cold, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, wind chill. So we've got the pumpkin gloves on today. If you are a returning viewer, you'll know this feed right here. I featured this recently. If you're new here, uh, this is our chick starter grower feed, non-GMO. Non oh, the wind has taken everything. Oh my goodness, I'm struggling. Here we go, non-GMO, locally produced in the state of Virginia where we live, 20% feed for our chicks who are growing out right now. I say chicks, but they're just young chickens. If you're not aware, with feed bags, facing front, right-hand side, pull that string, it takes the entire thing off. I think every time I've shown this, I've had someone in the comments say they never knew about it, so I'm gonna keep showing it until everyone in the world knows about it, I guess. Maybe not. Super windy today, 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts. So not super comfortable. I did just buy this feed yesterday, which is why it's in the back of my van. It needs to get put away in our feed shed and that'll happen as soon as we're done feeding and letting the chickens out. And then secondly, this Kalmbach all natural with added vitamins and minerals. Chicken feed, 16% layer crumbles. This is what we've been feeding our chickens for about six months, seven months, and it's great. Again, facing front, right hand side, pulled that string, pulls the whole thing off, wind it up into a nice little ball, throw it away, or in my case, stick it in your pocket, and throw it away later. Two of these Folgers coffee scooper buckets feeds our entire flock for the next day or so. I'm gonna put these on this side, on the leeward side, is that what it is? Windward is when the wind is hitting it. Leeward side, I think, is the where there's no wind. Let me know if I got that right or not. What I've been doing is filling our water buckets up. I've been gathering, collecting, and otherwise procuring five gallon buckets, filling them with water, and putting them out at the chicken coops, do all of them in one day, and that way there's water there when I need it to be there. Now, Ronan, who lives in this tractor solo, he's a bachelor, I figured this thing out. So to lift the, the tractor up, I use this little piece of wood as leverage. I have his water dish right here, but instead of having to drag it out and always put it back in, I just leave it hanging out halfway, so if he needs water, I could just pour it in there and it goes right in. And then I could just reach my hand under here, pull out his little food dish, fill this with his feed for the next day or so, and just shove it back under there, and it's good. All right, let's let him out. We're not quite sure if we're gonna keep Ronan as a breeder or use him as an eater. We've been looking into meat chickens and I've been doing a lot of research and sort of the purest way. If you're raising them for your self-sustainable or semi-self-sustainable homestead, it's recommended that you use heritage breeds like this Jersey Giant right here. Look at those ankles. He's only 10 months old. He's huge. So using a heritage breed like this, they grow slower, but they produce a vastly more desirable and delectable meat at the end of their five month growing period compared to the Freedom Rangers or the Cornish Rock Crosses. Conversely, I think that's the right way to say that. I've been saying it a lot like that and I'm not sure if that's correct, but I'm gonna stick with it for right now until someone tells me I'm wrong. Conversely, if you're raising chickens in order to uh, butcher them and sell them at market or whatever, Cornish Rock Crosses tend to be the, the way to go, or at least Freedom Rangers. The uh, Cornish Rock Cross, I believe, come to mature butcher weight in eight weeks and Freedom Rangers in 12 weeks. I might be off a little bit on those, but if you're trying to make money, make a living, those are the way to go. We're not trying to do that. We are trying to breed our chickens, raise them as uh, self-sustainably and heritagely, that's not a word, as possible. Now here's what I was talking about. 
This food bucket keeps falling over from the wind. Here's what I'm talking about. I have three buckets of water right here. Some ice on that one. Three buckets of water. This one is half. This is full, that's full. And by bringing them out here like this, whenever I see the water is dirty and it needs to get refilled, it's all right here. Don't have to worry about it. It's about 100 yards from here to the house. And I don't really want to truck that every day. So I just leave the water out here. In the summertime, that will be a problem because those buckets will heat up and they'll start creating sludge or mildew or whatever in there. So it won't work then. But hopefully we'll have our garden tool shed finished by then and we can keep the water in there out of the sunlight. Now, like I said, we have a little bit of sad news. Didn't want to have to make this video, but I knew it would come to this point. I do want to say, however, the generosity and support of people in my community has been incredible. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, even the YouTube shorts that we put out, you'll know that part of our goal is to feed people in our community for free, giving away a portion, a large portion of whatever we produce, grow, raise, etc. Free food for people that need it or want it is our mission. And in doing that, taking no money, I don't know, people have begun to bless us pretty, pretty extreme. So that's the good news part of today's video. And we'll go over that in a little while. Let's let these chickens out first. Hey, my friends. Hello. 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 Little P, are you coming out? Where's, where's little P? Uh, we're missing a rooster. We've got a hen right there. I think our rooster is next door in the other coop. Last night when I came to close them up, they were already all in their coops, so I'm not sure where anyone is right now. This is weird. There's Ranger. Hello, Ranger. Sorry about not knocking. Is Little P in there? Yes, he is. So this is interesting. Little P, our Americana rooster, has a hate-hate relationship with Ranger, our Jersey Giant rooster, yet decided to go into the Jersey Giant chicken coop. So we'll probably have some aggression once uh, they both get out here. This is weird. All right, here we go. Let's see what they do. So I'm just grateful neither one is dead. Little P seems confused. Definitely missing some of his chin feathers. Little P, come on, buddy. Well, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. You have to go home. He's typically pretty chill when I try to hold him. Uh, today is not gonna be a day like that. Ranger, you better watch out, mister. We got him. Oh, it's you're all right. Oh my goodness. There he is. He just got confused. He's in the wrong house. Yep, you have anything to say to the camera? Oh, look at his neck. Ranger really took it out on him. He used to be a great beard and he got whooped. That's all right. We still love you and we still want you around. You're such a cute boy. All right, sir, have a fun day. We do need to refill their water because it's pretty gross. Someone wrote in the comments of one of my videos recently that when they have their chickens poop in the water, they call it chicken tea. I thought that was funny. I'm not gonna call it that, but that's what they call it. So part of my way to ensure that people get along here is I put this water bucket halfway on each side so the chickens, even though they sometimes are aggressive to each other, are forced to drink from the same trough and enjoy each other's company. I only have enough water in this bucket to uh, rinse this out and then I have to go get another bucket of water to actually refill. Kind of an update on our incubation process. We put eggs in about nine days ago, 10 days ago, and they're incubating. We put 30 eggs in the incubator and we have one of those real cheap incubators. It doesn't have a real high success rate. Typically, it's kind of unstable, but it's what we it's what we could afford at the time, so it's what we use. We put 30 eggs in on day seven. We candled, and we had uh, 28 fertilized, two not fertilized, not developing. So we're very optimistic about uh, the hatch that we will, God willing, have. 
That's gross. All the Jersey Giant eggs were fertilized and going strong. All but one of the Americana eggs were fertilized and then all but one of Silver Dollar's eggs were fertilized and going well. So hopefully we'll have a solid hatch this time. The last time we hatched, we put 39 eggs in and ended up getting 14 eggs back, but there were some major issues with that. We had a big winter storm come through and it knocked out our power for several hours one day. And so we had to like literally keep the incubator just underneath our wood stove in our house. Thank God we had that going. And that ensured that the eggs stayed somewhere in the range of 95 degrees. And so uh, it wasn't perfect, but somehow we managed to get those eggs hatched. And those are the chickens that you are probably familiar with seeing if you're a viewer of the channel. If you're, if you're new to this channel, you're about to meet them. The, well, now there's 10. There was 11, but now there's 10. And here's the sad news where we come into this. Uh, many of you know Trooper, the chicken that we had that we considered a special needs chicken. He had some disabilities. His leg was real jacked up. He had a severe underbite. He wasn't developing properly. He wasn't feathering out properly. The other chickens were kind of just like neglecting him. And ultimately he did not make it. You know, that's kind of the hard thing about this is dealing with the death. And there is death. I wish that it could be all sunshine and rainbows and unicorns and healthy chickens that never die and crops that always look perfect and don't have any issues or blemishes and just whatever. No hawks, right? No hawks or raccoons or possums to tear at the flock. But the stark reality is this is part of the process. Things pass away, things die. And my job as the homesteader is to ensure that they have a good life while they have a life. Once they're gone, ensure that everyone else continues having a good life. So Trooper, rest in peace. But on a positive note, we have 10 others that are clawing at the door to get out. So let's just let them out. Good morning, my friends, the little ones. Hello, you little ones. Come here, buddy. This is uh, Zipper, who's trying to bite me. Hello, buddy. The Zip. We don't have a name for this girl yet. This is our gold laced Wyandotte rooster. He's gonna go into a breeding program. Uh, this is a cream leg bar gold laced mix. You see what I believe to be a Brahma right there, that tan color, that's peanut. The barred rocks don't really have a name yet. Uh, they're female, except for chubby cheeks. You can see chubby cheeks right there. It's the chicken with chubby cheeks. I know, so original. This is, uh, I call her Mo, but my son calls her Turbo. So together we call her Termo. Uh, she's the cream leg bar gold laced. There she is. Hey girl, Termo. There's Peanut, a little Brahma. Okay. We really love our barred rocks around here. Great layers, hardy, friendly disposition. Chubby Cheeks with them Chubby Cheeks. She's an Americana and barred rock mix. So that's pretty cool. Shouldn't be too much longer before they are all integrated with their respective flocks. And I had some people asking about how we built this uh, nursery coop. So if you look, we have these landscape timbers that are put into the ground by two feet. So the six feet above, two feet in the ground. We have one by fours across the top there. And then we have two three foot sections of chicken wire. So we have three and three. Now, a lot of people say, oh, chicken wire doesn't keep the predators out. True, but we don't have to worry about those predators in the daytime. Raccoons, possums, coyotes, foxes are not on the hunt in the daytime. They are nocturnal animals. So we don't have to really worry about them. Chicken wire is to keep chickens inside and that's what it does. Now, you can see this ramshackle flimsy fencing that I put up here for the nursery. All the nursery fence is supposed to do is keep those chickens on that side and these chickens on this side. Speaking of these chickens, I need to let them out. We'll go back to that in a sec. Please play nice, Silver Dollar. I don't have any issues today. Silver Dollar has been something of an aggressive fellow lately. He attacked my wife the other night and they had a big fight. So just hoping that he stays friendly. All right, back to the nursery fence. The way I stood these two by fours up is I just took these green T posts. Uh, they're four feet, so one foot in the ground, three feet above, hammered them in. And then I took a couple screws, one right there, one down there. And I just screwed the T post to the two by four. So it is flimsy. Stick a one by on top and that kind of braces it. This two by four just went straight into the coop. Okay, simple enough. This one here, T-post in the ground, two by, 
right onto that and then use this uh th what is this four foot by two and a half foot scrap wood to sort of brace that and hold it was going to be super temporary but our plans have evolved and shifted a little bit to where we're going to be hatching a lot more chickens a lot more frequently and so we will continue to use this as a nursery if you're not aware inside the main coop there's a divider wall that keeps the main flock away from the nursery flock hello little peanut so cute uh, they have the entire underside of that chicken coop to stay out of the wind to stay away from potential airborne predators like hawks i do get questions sometimes people asking why don't you have a topper on your chicken run you should have a topper to keep hawks away we've only ever had one hawk strike and that was out in the field where a chicken had no cover in the wide open but in here the chickens have cover underneath their coop they go inside the coop and we've never had a hawk actually strike within the chicken run itself sometimes they'll sit up in that pecan tree right there and watch but they've never actually come in here now that might be because we have neighbors way 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 over there that have chickens and they leave them out in the field 24 7. they don't lock their coop up they don't do anything they just let their chickens roam and they get picked off like crazy so we have no worry about hawks getting into these chicken coops from the air the hawks simply just don't seem very interested in these chickens when they have so many meals all around here we have neighbors that have guineas they have ducks they have chickens that all roam free uh, all around us so even though my chickens uh, don't have a topper on this they're definitely the most secured and safe similarly the jersey giants have this kind of flapping cover and they get under here can also go inside the americanas have the full underside of that coop over there they can get under so everyone has some shelter that they can go to when there is danger i just noticed that who is that is that pepper yeah uh no penelope uh penelope is in the americanas run somehow i don't know so i need to go get her and put her back in the right place these chickens are confused there she goes all right penelope let's play let's play nice here let's take it easy there we go. Shh, 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 shh. oh she's so cute you're so cute you're such a cute little mama she's much heavier than i had anticipated I mean, these other chickens are similar size to her, but she's so hefty. Huh? What? You got something to say? All right, time to set her free on her own side. You're welcome, Ranger. We've been giving out eggs. We've been giving out whatever we can to help whoever we can. That's the process. That's our mission. That's our goal. The generosity that we've received lately has been, honestly, I feel like miraculous, like literally miracle, because we went into, got something in my eye, probably tears. I cry a lot if you don't know me. We went into this whole process of raising chickens in order to help people out. We had no expectation of anything. Hey, we're just gonna help people out and that's what we'll do and that's what we'll be known for. Don't be known for what you're against, be known for what you are for. And so, we are for helping people. We are for feeding people. We are for spreading the good news. That's what we want to be known for. As we were giving out this food, we started having people reach out to us. People say, hey, we want to bless you. We want to help you. We want to just be a part of it. And so we started the Patreon. You already know about that. We have people that are monthly supporters of that. It's awesome. It totally helps us expand and feed more people. And then we had people start donating egg cartons. They wanted to pay us. I said, no. We don't want your money. They said, well, you take egg cartons. Yes, I'll take your egg cartons. That's awesome. I don't have to buy egg cartons. This is incredible. And then we had someone reach out after they heard that our lawnmower lost its steering. You saw that video? They gave us a lawnmower, immaculate condition. We had to change a tire on it because it had a hole in it. That's it. It's a great lawnmower. Then, literally a couple days after that, someone reached out and said, hey, we want to donate a zero turn lawnmower. I said, someone just donated a lawnmower. I don't know what to do. He said, just take the lawnmower. You can use multiple lawnmowers on all your acreage. So that's what we did. And here's what someone blessed us with. Literally for free, a Toro Time Cutter SS5060. It's a 50 inch, zero turn. And check this out. This is our little lean-to shed right here. Look at how many hours are on this. Now it's dirty, mind you, but 386.3 hours. That is so stinking unbelievable. This is a $4,000 mower. It's got 386 hours on it. Typically, I looked it up. This is what Google said. Typically, 
You'll get to 2,000 hours before you need any kind of major maintenance. So just oil change and air filter. You can go to 2,000 hours of usage before it'll actually need maintenance. This has 386 hours, which means it's not brand new, but it's pretty close to new. That's shocking to me. I told the guy I wanted to give him something. He said no. He had received eggs from us in the past and chicken feet when we butchered. He likes the chicken feet. And so he just blessed us with it. I feel undeserving of it. I feel like it could have gone to many more people more deserving than me for sure. However, I'm on like this journey in life to just say yes. Like anywhere that I possibly can, if, if I can say yes, I want to say yes and just see what happens. So there you have it. There's the short update about life on our homestead and what's going on. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it peaceful and I'll see you on the next video.